let's play the blind Brian Steltzer thing. Guys, this this is a clip about um, Brian Steltzer, I think is his name, the CNN guy being interviewed. And apparently this is a viral video that went all over the place. Um, this guy is asking about the Joe Biden. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Really appreciate it. I'm Daniel Schmidt. I'm a freshman at the University of Chicago. My question is for Miss Applebaum. Um, so in 2020, you wrote, those who live outside the Fox News bubble do not, of course, need to learn any of the stuff about Hunter Biden, referring to his laptop, of course. Uh, a poll later after that found that if voters knew about the content of the laptop, 16% of Joe Biden voters would have acted differently. What? No, 16%? By the way, uh, shout out to Denny R uh, Ringus. Thank you for um, uh, liking the show. Okay, so this guy is saying that there would have been a 16% variance in um, uh, voting if they would have known about uh, Hunter Biden's laptop. That is crazy. That is, oh, there it is right there. November 26, uh, the post-millennial. Uh, the Times Feed the Press is saying it. Let me send you guys a screenshot. Um, that's unbelievable to me, that, that if that's true. One in six Biden voters would have changed their minds. Um... 16% of Biden voters would have voted differently. That is incredible. The Hunter Biden laptop story was, was an actively suppressed story by our media. And just to give you guys context, I don't know if you remember this, before the Russia excuse for why Hillary Clinton lost, who remembers what the main excuse that Hillary gave for why she lost was? Who remembers? Dun, da, da, da. The James Comey email. You guys remember that? It's like a week before the voting happened. James Comey announced again that he was opening an investigation on Hillary. And um, that was the big thing that they were that they were uh, saying was what cost them the election. And then, of course, the Russia thing metastasized into the nonsense that we saw it was. So here, this guy's. So now what happened is right before the election, the Hunter Biden laptop thing goes crazy and big tech media um all coalesce together to stifle that report new york post posted it on their twitter account twitter actually suspended the new york post twitter twitter account to suppress the story and then years later we find out actually no it was all legitimate we're getting data dumps from this constantly over and over again we're probably going to do it we're probably going to do another show later on tonight about that and voters are saying, if I would have known, I would have voted differently. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Of course, we know a few weeks ago, the New York Times confirmed that the content is real. Do you think the media acted inappropriately when they instantly dismissed uh, Hunter Biden's laptop as Russian disinformation? And Because that actually, that actually resulted dear listener in quote interfer election interference now look i don't care if we have trump or biden uh kids are still in cages ceos are still doing all types of crazy shit it, it's it's no it makes no difference to me but that is inter uh election interference what they did it is that that is what that is what can we learn from that and ensuring that what we label as this information is truly this information and not reality? I, my, my problem with Hunter Biden's laptop is I think totally irrelevant. I mean, it's not whether it's disinformation or, I mean, I don't think the Hunter Biden's um, business relationships have anything to do with who should be president of the United States. So. <laughs> <laughs> Subhanallah. The arrogance of these people will lie. So a couple years ago, this woman writes an article stating uh, basically the laptop thing is only relevant or real to Trump people, the, to ridiculous, weird Trump voters. 
now that Biden has been elected and it's come out that the Biden thing actually, the laptop thing was true. Now she's saying, oh, I don't need to comment on it because it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. What the, what? What the son of a politician? What? As to how that, who did, that determines who should be the president of the United States? Ma'am, I don't know who you are, but that is not for you to decide. It's not for folks in the media and social media to decide for us whether or not Hunter Biden's escapades that are found on that laptop are disqualifying events for Mr. Joe Biden. That's not your call to make. That's our call to make. Your call to make is simply to bring us the information so that in a democracy we can make an informed decision. But these people are so arrogant. That after they've done the deed and, and got the eventuality they wanted, now they get to gaslight us and say, oh, that's irrelevant. It's irrelevant if he's got to deal with the DOD and Metabiota to create labs of pathogenic research of zoonotic whatever in Ukraine. Irrelevant. It's irrelevant if he's got millions of dollars in a slush fund with the Chinese. It's irrelevant if he took millions of dollars from a former mayor of Russia. All of these things have been discovered from this laptop. So we've got Ukraine, Russia, and China, literally the top three hottest nations on the, on the uh, American adversarial, maybe get it to World War III table. And this guy is in the middle of all of it. And you're saying that it's irrelevant and that we shouldn't have had the information prior to making this man the most powerful person on the planet. Unbelievable. As Alden expertly states, if it was irrelevant, if it was irrelevant, it wouldn't have been suppressed. Simple as that. Correct. Correct. If it was irrelevant, it would not have been suppressed. Correct. But now that she got what she wanted, she can dismiss this guy's question and say, you know, somebody said this is a Brian Stelter video, but this lady, this, this is not Brian Stelter. But anyway, I, I, it, it's infuriating the arrogance of these people. And some of you are so Machiavellian that you're like, yeah, but we, 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 had to do, we have to compromise and sacrifice everything to get rid of Trump. I'm telling you, we cannot trust these people to manage our consciousness. That's our business, guys. What we do with our minds and our votes is our business. What these people are doing is literally managing your consciousness. Because they don't believe that you're intelligent enough or whatever, and fill in the blank enough to make the right decision for yourself and your family in a democracy. I didn't find I don't find it to be interesting. I mean that that would be my problem with the that as a as a major news story. Ah, oh, you don't find it to be interesting. But you worked on mocking Trump supporters for for bringing it up and and the the the, the institutions etc and the and the circles that you belong to suppressed it. But now you're trying to gaslight me and say it's not interesting? <sighs> Okay, so it's not a major news story. If Ann Applebaum finds it not to explain something else behind it. Uh, oh, okay, no so maybe this is a Stelter situation. Uh, hi, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Christopher Phillips. I'm a first year at the college. Uh, my question is for Mr. Stelter. Uh, you've all spoken extensively about Fox News being a purveyor of uh, disinformation. Uh, but CNN is right up there with them. They pushed the Russian collusion hoax. They pushed the Jesse Smollett hoax. They <laughs> smeared Justice Kavanaugh as a rapist. And they also smeared Nick Salmon as a white supremacist. And yes, they, they dismissed did. the Hunter Biden laptop affair as they pure did. Russian disinformation. Uh, with mainstream corporate journalists becoming little... Yo! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So this, this, is, this is the reason this video went viral. This kid just went... <laughs> Here's Chris Sims. He's bumping lines and banging hookers. No, he's making DOD deals with uh, with with uh, Ukrainian bio labs. 
that are connected to Black and Veatch. He's taking millions of dollars from uh, former Russian mayors, and he's got a millions and millions of dollars of a slush fund with China, one of whom he actually threatened to sue because they wouldn't clear one of his $150,000 uh, deductions. Chris, I, I think you need to read a little bit more about what's actually in that in the Hunter Biden laptop because you don't appear to be familiar with it. Okay, this kid, <laughs> he just went off on them. Jesse Smollett, they <laughs> that was a big thing. I remember that. <laughs> the uh, Who's out of jail, by the way. Okay, all right. Let's figure that one out. The guy almost started another race war in our country, but we continue. Uh, uh, the, the Russian hoax for four years, CNN, every single day, there was some new not The only people that outdid CNN with the Russian hoax nonsense was uh, Rachel Maddow, who said that the... What was it that that Putin could freeze us out of Fargo and people could freeze to death because of Putin? I mean, this this was unbelievable. Um, yeah, let, let, let's just replay that again real quick. This kid went off. Okay, I see you, young buck. I see you, young buck. Yeah, and misinformation. And uh, then you get a bunch of stories wrong. So please explain yourself, Brian Stelter. Uh, hi, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Christopher Phillips. I'm a first year at the college. Uh, my question is for Mr. Seltzer. Uh, you've all spoken extensively about Fox News being a purveyor of uh, disinformation, uh, but CNN is right up there with them. They pushed the Russian collusion hoax. They pushed the Jesse Smollett hoax. They smeared Justice Kavanaugh as a rapist, and they also smeared Nick Sandman as a white supremacist. And yes, they dismissed the Hunter Biden laptop affair as pure Russian disinformation. Uh, with mainstream corporate journalists becoming little more than uh, apologists and cheerleaders for the regime, is it time to finally <laughs> declare that the, the, uh, the <laughs> canon of journalistic ethics is dead or no longer operative? Uh, all the mistakes of the mainstream media, and CNN in particular, seem to magically all go in one direction are we expected to believe that this is all just some sort of random coincidence or is there something else behind it yo i i i don't know how he's gonna answer this i don't know how how can you answer that that's like when uh was it gupta sanjay gupta was on uh joe rogan joe rogan was like yo they lied bro He's like, uh, he's like, yo, why'd they lie? He's like, rrr, 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 I don't know. He didn't even mention the horse dewormer and all the other, uh, the, all the other stuff that, that they did. Um, wow. Um, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty fascinating. That's, that's pretty fascinating. I must say. Oh my God. Okay. Let, let's see what this guy has to say. And notice, notice, notice also how he said, um, they're right up there with Fox News, which means that he's saying that Fox News are also disinformation specialists. But Brian, you're here right now representing CNN. So now we're coming for you. I don't know how he's going to answer this one, guys. I really, really don't. Let's see. It's too bad. It's time for lunch. <laughs> uh, <You have> <laughs> yeah, I bet, bro. I bet. I wouldn't want to be in y'all situation currently. Seconds. No, I mean there is there is a clock that says thirty seconds. But but I think my honest answer to you, and I will I'll come over and talk in more detail after this, is that I think you're describing a different channel than the one that I watch. <laughs> you guys are just watching a different channel than what I watch. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Address the date, the constant every other day Russia hoaxism. Address the Jesse Smollett thing. Address the Snake Island thing. Address the Horse Dewormer thing. Address, 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 address. You guys were talking about the Hunter Biden, Hunter Biden laptop and the crazy right-wing conspiracy theories, blah, 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 blah. You guys were wrong. Uh, not to mention the Cuomo situation. We're not even going to bring, the kid didn't even bring that up. Kudos to him, by the way, because the Cuomo situation wasn't a disinformation thing. Good on this kid for staying on topic. But holy shit. Yeah. Uh, 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 disinformation and the erosion of democracy. Allah Akbar. I mean, what?
Uh, but I understand that that is a popular right wing narrative about CNN. I think it's important when we talk about Oh, here we go. Okay, so now the kid is a right winger. He's a right winger. Even though, as I pointed out, because I knew he was gonna, I, I knew he's gonna do this. I, I I pointed out to you, dear listener, that the kid said that they're right up there with Fox News, which means he was also saying that Fox News was spewing inaccurate propaganda. But now, but again, this is what I tell you, you guys. If you did, if anything makes Russia looks bad, look anything that makes. Russia look in any way sympathetic, Ukraine look unsympathetic, and America look like imperialists. That's all Russian propaganda. It's a, it's a nice little little Pavlovian tick that you can throw out there and it'll immediately disarm the conversation because you don't want to be part of Russian propaganda. So now here you are. This looks to be like some sort of left-wing outlet. There's Stelter. There's the other crazy lady talking about the, the, the Hunter Biden laptop thing didn't matter. Now I get to call you a right winger or imply that you're a right winger in this in front of all these people so that you'll you'll back down. Address the specific examples that the kid brought up, Mr. Seltzer, please. We continue. Holy moly. Reality and democracy. All these networks, all these news outlets have to defend democracy. And when they screw up, admit it. Uh, but when. But you don't. You don't, as I've said over and over again about CNN, they will scream the propaganda and whisper the correction. They did this with the Snake Island thing. I Anderson Cooper, that's how I found out about Snake Island. The Anderson Cooper, they had a thumbnail of he was always crying. Uh, F you Russian <laughs> warship, they all died. Then they read the thing about the Medal of Honor, whatever, whatever the 13 victims of Snake Island got. I had to, I had to YouTube, Google website search to get the correction and the correction was a paragraph this big and it said ah looks like all those russian uh, snake island people survived you guys have absolutely made those mistakes and no you have not corrected yourself no you have not just be honest about it i i did a segment earlier we were talking about the russian invasion now i didn't do now look i said i was wrong about the russian invasion that was my personal opinion i didn't even put this on this platform but I'm a real stickler about if I'm wrong or something needs to be corrected, I want people to know that. So no, you guys do not edit yourself. You guys do not issue serious corrections and there's no consequences for your guys' horrible uh, reporting, especially when it's in the service of the Democratic Party. Keep in mind, dear listener, I didn't say in service of the left. Those aren't the same thing as I've learned through this channel and you beautiful people, we continue. Benjamin Hall, the Fox correspondent, was wounded in Ukraine. The news crews at CNN and the New York Times stopped what they were doing and they tried to help. They tried to help him get out of the country. They tried to find the dead crew members. That's what news outlets do. That's how they actually do work together to your question. Okay, about you can stop right there. I, I just have a question. What in the hell does that have to do with CNN? Com <laughs> okay, that voice is kind of uh, a little bit grating. Shout out to Ben Shapiro, though. No disrespect. But <laughs> uh, how was I wrong about Russia? Because I had a personal friend of mine that I that I joust with on a daily basis, and he was telling me, they're going to invade, they're going to invade, they're going to invade. I'm like, man, they're not going to invade. Uh, then there was another channel where people were asking about it and I said, I don't, I don't really think it's going to happen. And I, I just said it in passing. So I was wrong about the Russia invasion. So I never shot a middle America commercial about it. But my point is to say, if you have any influencer platform in context like this, try to bring up the situations when you were wrong or incorrect. One, to protect people from thinking that you're some sort of bastion of infallible truth. But the other thing is it makes you a lot more focused about making sure that you have all your sources. Because if you have to keep admitting when you're wrong and you don't like that feeling, then before you, you fire up your camera to shoot, you're going to make sure that all your shit is together before you shoot and say something. So these mechanisms are there actually to help you and to help your audience be as accurate as possible. But these guys, now what they're doing is he's bringing up this emotional, again, the manipulation of emotion. Oh, this guy got killed and Brian Hall got shot. We all stopped what we were doing and we tried to help and we tried to find the, the dead guy. No, you didn't. <laughs> and you shouldn't. 
That's not your job. That was not the job of the New York Times and all the rest of them to go on a on a uh, 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 a security mission to secure the body of a dead reporter or or to or to retrieve his body. Ridiculous, ridiculous. I'm sure we had Polish special forces as we had the Grom, whoever went down there and, and recovered his body or whatever. It was not the New York Times and other. But again, it's this ridiculous emotional. Let me tug on your heart strings. A journalist died. Maybe a bunch of people in the audience are probably aspiring journalists. Oh, a journalist died. So pay no attention to the five or six elements of propaganda and lies and smears that we did. We almost destroyed a man's career. Another kid, we had his face on TV all over the place as some horrible white supremacist and all the rest of it. We actually ended up getting sued and having to settle out of court millions of dollars for lying about that kid. Oh, you're a right winger. Plus, look at this emotional situation. Brian Hall was a Fox News guy. He got shot. But Stelter doesn't realize that the, the 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 analogy he used or or the event that he used where they stopped everything they were doing to help Fox News <laughs> in this highly emotional moment literally goes lockstep with what the kid said because the kid said that Fox News and you guys are propagandists and that you are right up there with them. So the kid wasn't saying that you have a, a oppositional relationship to Fox News. He was saying that you guys are different sides of the same coin. So even this emotional uh, situation, and it warrants emotion, all it does is illustrate the truthfulness of what this kid said and the very naked and bald pun on purpose. This naked attempt to distract this kid failed miserably. God almighty completely blowing a series of stories in dramatic fashion over the course of years, all directed in one direction. But someone was wounded, and so we had people there who helped. What does that have to do with anything? Nothing. I mean, I assume so with the Red Cross, but the Red Cross is not a journalistic outlet that purports to be objective in its news coverage. The, the media continue to be the great story of American politics. Is that everything? Okay, so that's that's everything that the guy said. All right, all right. I mean, <laughs> can you believe they spent a hundred to two hundred fifty million dollars on a flight? <laughs> I mean, uh, 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 what can you say, dear listener? What, what can you say? Uh, does does Ben Shapiro uh, acknowledge Fox News is not fair and balanced? I don't I don't know. Uh, this this segment wasn't about Ben Shapiro, um, but again, what I will say is so we can all keep on task. This kid came out and said, "You guys are right up there with there Fox was this News." This disinformation conference. He said, "You guys are right up there with Fox News." So he included Fox News in the disinformation. I'll play it again. Because that's the only thing that's important here. And and the response was to s smear this kid as a right winger and he doesn't know what he's talking about and this is not the whatever. L wh listen to it closely again. My question is for Mr. Seltzer. Uh, you've all spoken extensively about Fox News being a purveyor of uh, disinformation. Uh, but CNN is right up there with them. They push right up there with them. So this kid doesn't deny that Fox News is a purveyor of disinformation. Look what they're saying about Ukraine. He's saying, you guys are right up there with him. And what does he say? What's the first thing? First thing he talks about is, hey, we got to go to lunch. The second thing he says is, yeah, this is a right wing talking point. Ah, all right, guys. Uh, I have we have I have another appointment in three minutes. Uh, if you know, you know, on the other, on the other channel, I may be back later on tonight. Cause we've got two more stories to go on type 22. If you like the call in debate format, call in discussion format type 22. If, uh, if you liked it, um, give me your feedback on it. I'm going to cut that video out and let it be a standalone debate. Um, but, um, uh, so let me know and, and, and try to give me some constructive me, not my caller, me. Try to give me some constructive feedback on how we can make the debate portion of the show 
more welcoming, uh, a more uh, neighborly environment and things like that. I really believe that the only way we're going to be able to figure out any sort of way of hope of, of looking at this thing accurately is one another. We obviously can't depend on the media. Um, ben, I, I, I had I had a web week scheduled for you, but then you, you sent that last email, so we had to move it back. Why would I do web week if you're not going to watch it? Weird. <laughs> Did I touch on the, uh, on the Irish uh, MEP giving out? No, I have not. Um, I will later. Okay. Uh, shout out to Jen Jen. Jen Janelle. Shout out to her. Um, so, so guys, guys, um, there you go. Um, that's, that's kind of the future of the show. Going to be more audience involvement, going to be more back and forth. Uh, and I'm very, very confident that we can get something close to the truth. Um, on on this issue but uh i've got to go off on the other channel in about two minutes if i see you there great if not you guys know the deal in the meantime love your neighbor take care of each other middle america we are the media till next time guys